Directed energy weapons like high energy lasers could be a game changer in future wars. Laser weapon systems are earning their way onto the battlefield. The competition between the United States and China, as well as the innovation that comes from the private sector, is driving the charging advancement of military technology. Drones, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, lasers and robotics will all become increasingly common. The Department of Defense allocated a record $130.1 billion for research and development in its fiscal year 2023 budget. While keeping a close eye on the Ukraine conflict and other global tensions, the military is increasingly focused on technological solutions that could potentially give the US an advantage in the conflict. However, the US Navy recently admitted to having advanced and lethal technology that will send shivers down your spine. What exactly is this technology and how will it be used by the US Navy? Join us in today's video as we unravel the United States Navy's most recent and complex invention. In the 1951 science fiction film, The Day the Earth Stood Still, powerful ray guns are shown vaporizing rifles and even tanks. Lightsabers and massive spaceship-mounted laser cannons are just two examples of the many types of directed energy weapons depicted in the Star Wars movies. These types of weapons, known as directed energy weapons, are now becoming a reality. DE weapons can take the form of high-energy lasers, high-powered radio frequency or microwave devices, charged or neutral particle beam weapons, and other similar technologies. Lasers and microwaves are both components of the electromagnetic spectrum, which also includes light energy and radio waves. The wavelength and frequency of the energy is what differentiates the two of them from one another. In spite of the fact that they are both part of the electromagnetic spectrum, laser weapons and microwave weapons function in very different ways and produce very different effects. Think of the difference between a laser pointer and a flashlight. The laser light is coherent in a single color, whereas the flashlight emits broad spectrum light. Laser light, due to its coherence, can remain concentrated for very long distances, even thousands of miles into space. But with laser weapons, instead of thinking in terms of a laser pointer, the mental image should be more like a powerful long-range blowtorch. Lasers are classified as either gas, solid state or a hybrid of the two. The lasers on the current path to weaponization include solid state combined fiber and crystal slab as well as hybrid lasers. Fiber lasers are lasers in which the active medium is an optical fiber doped with rare elements, most commonly erbium. Slab lasers are a type of high power solid state laser in which the laser crystal is in the shape of a slab. For even greater power and efficiency, hybrid lasers, such as a diode-pumped alkali laser, combine trace gas with semiconductor diode arrays. The destructive power, lethality, of directed energy weapons is determined by the amount of energy transferred to the target over time. This concentrated energy has the potential to have effects ranging from non-lethal to lethal. Lasers, for example, can cut through steel, aluminium and a variety of other materials in a matter of seconds. They can be very effective at causing pressurized vessels, such as missile propellant and oxidizer tanks, to explode. They have the ability to destroy, degrade or blind many other systems with sensors and electronics. The lethality of high-energy lasers is determined by the laser's power output, the purity and concentration of the light, beam quality, the target range, the ability to keep the laser on the target aim point, jitter control and tracking, and the atmospheric environment through which the laser travels to the target. However, for the first time, this technology was successfully implemented in 2020. The US Navy used a directed energy weapon, in this case a laser, to successfully stop an anti-aircraft while it was in flight. The Navy later issued a statement describing the laser as efficient and effective in defending against enemy drones or small armored boats. The Navy's Pacific Fleet, understandably, did not specify where this laser weapon system was tested, only that it took place somewhere in the Pacific on May 16, 2020. Despite the hazy descriptors, images and videos have been released showing the transport dock ship USS Portland using a high-energy class solid-state laser to take down a drone in mid-air. During another demonstration, the Laser Weapon System Demonstrator, LWSD Mark II, aboard Portland successfully engaged a static surface training target. 
The lone LWSD was installed on Portland in October 2019, and it was turned on for the first time in December of the same year. After that, in August of 2021, the Portland was sent out to serve in the Indo-Pacific and Central Command areas of responsibility. The 150 kilowatt LWSD is mounted on the Portland superstructure and is linked to the ship's Combat Information Center, where a control console is installed. The system's tactical laser core module was built by Northrop Grumman, while the energy and thermal storage modules were built by the US government. Directed energy weapons have been in development since the 1960s and they are now being put to good use, though only time will tell. While the hopes and aspirations of this specific directed energy laser are currently those of defence, who knows what this technology will be used for in the future. But this was not all, as threats to Navy vessels continued to grow in the form of drone swarms and anti-ship missiles. After decades of testing, the Navy is nearing a low-cost solution for deterring and defending against aerial threats at sea. According to Lockheed Martin, the Navy received its first high-energy laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, or HELIOS, system in the third quarter of fiscal year 2022. The system, which can fire more than 60 kilowatts of directed energy at targets up to 5 miles away, is currently being installed on an Ali Burke-class destroyer undergoing upgrades. Helios is part of the Navy Laser family of systems, a group of platforms that the service sees as the foundation of an incremental strategy for increased laser weapon capability, according to budget documents. In the proposed budget for the year 2023, the service requested approximately $35 million for the family of systems. This is the year in which the first system is anticipated to become operational at sea. This new technology offers significant improvements over previously available systems and options for defending against unmanned aerial vehicles and anti-ship missiles. Surface-to-air missiles and Gatling guns require a certain amount of magazine depth on ships. Additionally, these weapons have poor cost exchange ratios when used against low-cost drones. Furthermore, reloading Navy surface ship magazines necessitates the vessel travelling hundreds of miles over several hours to reach a safe zone. An adversary like China has access to a large number of UAVs and anti-ship missiles, and Beijing has a high capacity for producing more. According to officials, this could limit the Navy's ability to defend itself affordably. That is one of the issues that Helios is intended to address. According to Lockheed Martin, the system is designed for continuous operation using available ship power rather than adding another energy magazine. Similarly, the new system outperforms previous laser weapons in terms of power and positioning. LAW's laser weapon system could only produce 30 kilowatts of power and was not intended for long-term use. The Helios installation is taking place concurrently with an ongoing Aegis modernization effort in San Diego, California, according to a Lockheed Martin spokesperson. The Aegis Weapon System, or AWS, is the Navy's command and control system, which has been in use since the 1980s. Lockheed Martin has also been awarded a contract to modernize the system on destroyers and other vessels. Helios is being integrated into its vessel and the Aegis Combat System, allowing for long-term deployment. The weapon employs spectral beam combined fiber lasers, which provide a higher beam quality than the LAW's incoherently combined six high quality fiber lasers. Because the laser can dazzle UAS as well as destroy them, it has game changing warfighting capabilities. According to a white paper published by Lockheed Martin last year, the system has demonstrated its ability to repeatedly hit a high speed target at tactically extended ranges. According to the paper, it closed the fire control loop on a track provided by the Surface Combat System Center's Aegis Combat Sensor after achieving coarse and fine optical tracking. The Optical Dazzling Interdictor Navy, or ODIN, enables the system's dazzling technology by interfering with enemy platforms, electro-optical and infrared sensors. Other ships have this capability, but the Helios program is the first time it has been fully integrated into a ship's command and control architecture. As the United States works on developing laser technology, its adversaries are not far behind. While neither China nor Russia have the advanced laser systems available in the United States, lasers may become more prevalent across domains in the coming years. Russia in particular has boasted about its use of an experimental laser system called Zadira during its invasion of Ukraine. 
Given the country's proclivity to exaggerate its technological capabilities, it's unlikely that the system had much of an impact. But the use of UAS in the conflict will push the technology forward. However, one type of DEW blinding weapons has been prohibited as a means or method of warfare since the 1995 Protocol on Blinding Laser Weapons, under the Convention on the Prohibition or Restrictions on the Use of Certain Conventional Weapons CCW. This protocol seeks to avoid unnecessary suffering or superfluous injury caused by lasers that could result in blindness. However, this protocol is primarily concerned with the humanitarian implications of one type of laser effect. There has been no further structured debate on DEWs in general, either in terms of humanitarian law beyond blinding lasers or their impact on broader international security. Despite the fact that certain radio frequency systems are already in use and laser weapons are nearing operationalization. Given the increased development and use of these various weapon systems, a multilateral examination of these systems may be timely. This could happen, for example, during domain-specific discussions like the open-ended working group on lowering space threats to better grasp what these systems represent for international security to analyze the repercussions of their misuse and to put in place necessary measures in response to the risks these weapon systems could pose. Now let's hear your thoughts about DEWs in the comments section below.